Hi, this is John. This video is on scratch building considerations and in particular considerations when doing sports scale modeling. By sports scale, I mean a scale model that's meant to fly as a hobby rocket and should be immediately apparent as a model of the prototype, but we're not worried about detail down to the rivet level as you might be with a static model. So let's talk about reference material. Of course, the internet is the ultimate reference. It just can be a little difficult to find what you need. I'm going to mention a couple of books that might be of interest. Uh, by far and away, my favorite is Peter Alway's Rockets of the World. Not only is this pretty comprehensive for sounding rockets, it also has the detail needed for modelers. It's got some historical information. It's got dimension diagrams dimensions, and it's even got color patterns so you can paint it appropriately. This is a must-have book. Another useful book that came out more recently is Post-War Air Weapons by Thomas Newdick. This is good for inspiration, although it's a little bit short on details and doesn't have any dimension drawings. Also, Jack Haggerty's Spaceship Handbook is fun. Um, obviously, these are for fantasy scale or scales of fictional rockets. The rocket that I'm using to illustrate this video is a model of the standard Aero V. I actually started this, or at least started thinking about it, in 1998, and then just got reinterested in the idea in 2014. So, it's nice to read a little bit of the history see some of the pictures, but the most interesting, useful diagrams for us is the dimension diagram and then the colors. Again, various rounds used for various purposes had different color schemes, so you can even choose to decorate it differently and still be prototypical. Once we've selected the rocket to model, we need to choose a scale to model it at. It's often convenient to choose a scale that results in the ability to use standard airframe tubes. Of course, you're not limited to standard tubes. Here's a 12-inch carbon fiber airframe that I rolled up for a WAC Corporal model. And here's a custom nose cone that I made for a solar sailor upscale. So you can make all your own parts, and there's plenty of information on this site about how to do that. But if you do choose standard airframe sizes, it's easier because the tubes are available and components are available for them, such as nose cones, centering rings, etc. The scale also impacts the final size of your rocket. The Aero-V main diameter is 15 inches, so modeling it at full scale is going to be a huge rocket. I like to target something like a 3.9 inch airframe, which is 4 inches OD. That produces a nice sized rocket, large enough to be easily worked on, but yet small enough to be manageable for transportation and storage. So to finalize our scale, let's go back to the plans. So I wanted to build this around 3.9 inch tubing. So based on the 15 inch diameter of the sustainer, that would be a 27% scale. Similarly, Booster using a 3 inch tube would give us a 24% scale. And so these two are pretty close and gives us a nice convenient 25% scale or one quarter. Once we have our scale worked out, we can prepare a drawing at the size that we'll be modeling. Don't rush through and skip this step. It's important for many reasons. If nothing else, it's necessary to have a copy printed out in the shop to work from so you don't make mistakes. And then finally, to verify the design, it's important to do a simulation. You can get a preliminary weight plus an idea if the rocket will be stable, if there are appropriate motors, if everything seems like it'll work out. Once you verify that your design will work, it's time to start assembling the parts. You can purchase them from kit manufacturers, from various third-party suppliers, or you can make them yourself. My site has plenty of information about various different fabrication techniques, and I'll go over some highlights here. If you have a tech shop locally, 
you might give CNC routing a try. You can easily produce many flat parts such as centering rings, electronic bay plates, and many other useful items. Another very useful technique is fiberglass lamination. Adding a layer of fiberglass onto a tube gives you a hard, smooth surface that makes any tube better. You can make completely custom tubes such as this 12 inch carbon fiber tube made from my WAC Corporal model. If no commercial source has the right shaped nose cone, you can make your own, such as I'm doing here in this molding how-to video. I hope I've demonstrated that building a custom rocket, even a sports scale model, is not that much harder than building from a kit. Little extra preparation and planning and research, but much of which you would probably be best advised to do even with a kit. And instead of a kit that other people have as well, you have a custom rocket of your own design and modeling a cool prototype.